afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Cook Along Live. We are at episode 48. As always, I'm your host, Robert Sogamonian, here to uh, teach you how to make some uh, awesome bolognese sauce. This is one of my favorite sauces to make. I think it's really, really uh, simple and easy. It's uh, kind of a base sauce, so nothing crazy. If you want to add anything to it, you are more than welcome to. However, uh, just be aware that right here at the beginning, there is kind of a base. If you want to add things like um, additional flavorings, garlic, things like that, those aren't part of this sauce. You might have noticed in the ingredients. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So tonight I'm going to be drinking a beer that I found, um, Heller High Pomegranate by 21st Amendment Brewing. Now, they have Heller High Watermelon, which I love. It's a really good beer. And I got this. Looks interesting, and I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm going to let you guys know I really enjoy this beer and highly recommend it for something too strong. Give a nice little shot, too. Mm -hmm. Let's get started. You'll notice I got a big pot here. You don't need this. I'm using this just because it works a little bit better for me. But if you got a smaller pot, that's great. You should use some kind of a pot, either a saucepan or a pot of some sort, but it doesn't have to be this big. I'm going to go ahead and get this heated up, and the first thing we're going to do is brown off our meat. We should have about a pound of ground beef. You can also use a combination of ground pork and ground, ground beef if you'd like. Um, I would imagine that if you're going the vegan route or the meatless route, uh, any of the Beyond Beef products would probably work great. I know that I've had some of their Beyond Beef ground beef, and it's actually pretty good. Um, but we're going to get this kind of going first. <clears throat> the reason is I want to get any of the extra fat out of here before I start with the rest of it. Our pan's getting warm. Go ahead and put our ground beef in. And let me know how everything is running tonight. I'm actually running a overall volume is a bit low. All right, thank you for that. I'm running a uh, a new system, new setup here for my uh, stream, so things like that are good to know. Let me go and take on the streaming rig. Go ahead and start mashing this up, and then while it kind of cooks down, I'll take a look at the sound and input and see if it's maybe coming in a little bit less loud than it is on the other computer. There we go. All right, give me just a second here to go check on my sound. And I can adjust it. Hey, Laura, how's it going? Good to see you. Settings and. Take a quick look. You'll notice that this is not uh, something that needs a lot of hands-on attention. All right. Go to. Here. All right, give me one second. I'm going to run. I'm going to get this stirred up real quick, and then I'll run over to the uh, receiver unit. See if I can adjust the gain on that. Maybe step it up one. And part of the reason that I switched over to a new uh, streaming rig is this one here has always kind of been in the, in the kitchen. It runs a, a local home server for me, and um, it wasn't quite powerful enough to get the cook-alongs, or to do the streaming here for me. So I'd always have to bring my computer out of my office, set it up in the kitchen, take it apart and put it back when I was done. It takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra work, not, not super ideal. So I went ahead and grabbed a few more parts and updated it. There we go, I just set up the uh, gain a little bit. Is that better? 
let's take a look here. Yeah, it looks like that. Well, it looks like it's peaking a little bit. Is that good? Is that too loud or is that, is that good? Let me know because I can't hear my own quality right now. But this should be, make it a lot easier for me to, you know, get set up on Sundays instead of having to spend an hour setting up and then an hour tearing down uh, on top of the cleanup and everything. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just get our meat cooking in here. We want to break it down, get it nice and brown, cook off any of that fat. If there's any extra fat, we are going to drain it. But the point here is just to get the meat browned off. We're also going to get a little bit of the kind of burn bits, the fond that I like to get at the bottom of the pan, which will help with our uh, building the depth of flavor in our sauce. And you don't have to cook this all the way through. The meat's going to be cooking with the sauce. So as long as you get it kind of browned, you should be good to go. Now what I like to do when I'm draining off ground beef, I actually like to get a little sheet pan, something like this. And what I can do is I line, I have a baking tray, a 13 by nine baking tray. I line it with aluminum foil, and then I can drain my meat right into the colander. Don't have to worry about any of that extra fat going down the drain, which is not a good thing. You can actually clog your plumbing, which is not ideal. And I'll just kind of let that sit and drain out. Once the fat is cooled down, I can just crumple up the aluminum foil and toss it. So pretty cool little setup. I'll set this aside for now. What we're going to want to do now is kind of get our, our sofrito going. And what a sofrito is basically like, um, if you know what French cooking mirepoix is, it's where you have the carrots, the celery, and the onion. Um, I'm sorry, the carrots, the garlic, and the onion. It's called a mirepoix. It's like the holy trinity. If you're doing any kind of uh, Louisiana Southern kind of style cooking where they have the bell peppers and a couple of similar ingredients, this is the Italian version of that. It's basically onion, it's a couple of sprigs of celery, and a couple of carrots. Now, you don't really have to get these guys cut down super fine, but they do dissolve better into the sauce if you cut them down thinner. If you're not very good with a knife, a quick tip is just to grab a grater and just grate these guys down. Um, but basically what I'm looking for is about a half a cup of onion and then two-thirds a cup of each of the onion and the celery. That's honestly ballpark it and you'll be close enough. So for our onion, we've done this plenty of times on the channel. We'll go ahead and uh, cut it in half, lay it flat like so. We'll cut a couple of horizontal slices about 90% of the way through the onion. And then what we'll do is we will cut some vertical slices in as well. Now the pan is still warm over to my right, but it's uh, not on. I have it turned off because I don't want all of those brown bits from the beef to scorch onto the bottom. Any of these little bits here, I'm just going to kind of collect and maybe just dice them down a little bit finer. There we are. And then I'm going to use my hand as kind of like a little backstop for my knife and use my knuckles to guide my knife and cut these into really, really nice, fine diced onions. And again, you don't have to go super, super fine, but the finer you can get them, the more they will kind of disappear into the into the sauce. Go ahead and grab a couple of these little extra pieces and work through the tears. This is a spicy onion. I'm going to gather everything up like so and then just kind of give it a once over across as well. Mm. 
There we are. Again, trying to work through the tears. This onion is not treating me very nicely. All right. Whew. All right. <clears throat> Get that back on. And what we want to do is grab some olive oil. We want to put this at medium to medium low, or I'm sorry, medium to medium high. You don't want to get it too hot, but you do want it to be nice and toasty. Coat the bottom of the pan. And it seems like my pan is making some kind of a harmonic humming, which is interesting. I don't know if that's coming through on the uh, on the mic or not, but it's kind of singing at me. Along with this, we're going to add three tablespoons of butter. Let me know if you can hear that singing and whether it's annoying or not. If it is, I'll switch to a different pan. And we're going to go ahead and get our finely diced onion right into the pan. I'm turn this down to medium. I don't want it going too fast. There we go. Absolutely worth crying over, Casper. Good to see ya. Whew. Go ahead and grab my little spatula and get these guys mixed in with the butter and the olive oil. Now again, since I'm doing this at like a medium, medium-ish, medium-high, but like on the low end of medium-high, I'm okay with using extra virgin olive oil. The temperature on that should not scorch the oil or burn it. Go ahead and get this all mixed up. And now the reason that we really wanted to drain the extra fat off of the beef, in my opinion, is because we're adding so much extra fat here it just kind of makes everything a little bit, uh, I don't know, not ideal when you're cooking some more stuff. Go ahead and <clears throat> chop up our carrots first. I'm going to cut it in half, and then cut it in half again. So I've got some flat edges here that I can lay down on the cutting board. And then with our carrots, we just want to kind of cut along the carrot, like so. And again, you can absolutely take this and grate it down if you're not comfortable with a knife. My horizontal cuts I'm not super worried about, but my vertical cuts I want to get them pretty fine. The vertical and the uh, cross cuts are really what kind of determine the width, the size of your dice here. Horizontal does to a, to a certain extent, however, you can kind of cheat <laughs> and just use the vertical and cross cut. There we go. Nice and thin. Kind of line these guys up and dice them down. Well, my onions over there are looking a little bit translucent, starting to brown around the edges. I don't want them to get too deep in color though. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice little stir and maybe turn the heat down. I do want them to be nice and golden and kind of translucent, but I don't want them to be, you know, like dark, not caramelizing these guys. We'll dice our carrots down. That's uh, 
probably about half what I'll need, but I'll go ahead and put them in for now. We'll get our next batch going. This will also help to kind of cool down the oil and stop the onions from scorching or burning. Got a nice little stir through. We have this larger carrot. Let's knock on a little bit. <laughs> to me, the best part of cooking is getting the little extra bits that you're not going to use and just making sure they go into the right food receptacle which should be your mouth. All right. It should give us enough carrot for this. And we can move on to our celery. Now the carrot adds a little bit of sweetness to this. You're not really going to get a carrot flavor. You're more going to get kind of the, the sugar out of the carrots. And that's enough for that. Now we'll do maybe both of these celeries should probably be about the same as the carrot. Go ahead and get that mixed through. And you'll notice that over here we've got our carrots and onions. The onions are translucent but not burning or not scorching or browning. And the carrots are nice and mixed through as well. And then we'll switch over to our celery here. Do that. Now for the celery, what I like to do is actually cut it in half, just right down the center, because that then gives me kind of two flatter pieces of celery that I can further trim down. Now if these super long pieces of celery are too much, go ahead and cut it in half or cut it into thirds. Might make it a little bit easier to kind of section it off. Like so. And then you can put two halves together. You get through it pretty quick. Something like that. And then we'll just dice through this. As finally as we can get it. So Drake and Allison are joining us again tonight, and they're cooking along with me. I think they said that they're making some fresh baked bread as well, which unfortunately is not going to be on my stream tonight, but that sounds delicious. There's a one set of celery. I'll cut this other half, and I think that'll be good for our celery and our sofrito. Cut it in half first. Make it a little easier to dice it up. And there we go. Just get a nice little fine dice on these celery. They'll go in. And then we can take our drained ground beef and add that back to the pot. Mm 
There we are. Celery's in. Some of the onions are starting to kind of brown around the edges, but they're not browning all the way through, which is good. Go ahead and get all of this mixed up. I'll let that cook for, I don't know, maybe about a minute or two. Just let the celery kind of soften up along with the carrots and the onion. And you should start to get that sweet kind of carroty smell. It's not even really carrot. It's just the sweetness from the carrot that you're starting to smell and the richness from the onions and the kind of sharpness from the celery coming through as well. Go ahead and add a nice little pinch of salt. Get everything kind of mixed together. Awesome. Now, while we're doing that, we're going to switch over to our uh, sink over here. And you'll notice that on my burner, I've actually got a pot of water. We're going to get this on high because I want it to be boiling. Go ahead and add about a tablespoon of salt to the water. This is going to be where we cook our pasta. All right. Let's do this. Ah, looks like I got to move that chat window. It's covering the picture in picture. That's fun. Go ahead and take care of that now. Where are we? Unlock. Oh, I see what I gotta do. All right, give me two seconds here. That, and we'll do that. We'll move this over there. And my dog will start barking at everything. All right, there we go. Cool, cool. Yeah, Sim UK, absolutely. I, I'm very, very cautious about my fingers when I'm cutting. I have, uh, I've actually nicked myself a couple of times, long time ago. You know, kind of early in, in really learning how to do it at a high level, and um, not fun. Definitely not fun. All right, all right. So we got all of our sofrito in here. It's looking fantastic. Everything is nice and soft. Uh, onions are translucent. The celery has kind of cooked down and become less uh, fibrous, I guess is a good way to put it. We still have some fond down on the bottom of the pan, which is fine. We're going to add a little bit of wine later to get some of that off. Uh, for the moment, though, we're going to go ahead and take our drained ground beef or whatever meat you are using and get that back into our pan. We'll get everything nice and mixed through. Get this back up to medium heat. Now bolognese is a really, really interesting sauce. A lot of people think that it's very difficult to make, and it really isn't. It takes a little bit of time, but all of the individual steps are pretty straightforward and pretty easy. I'm just going to go ahead and keep breaking down the meat as we go. If you like chunkier meat sauce, then uh, leave chunkier pieces of meat in here. That's totally up to you and your preference. I really, really like it when I can taste the meat, get little bits of it, but don't have meat balls floating around. All right, there we go. Oof, it smells amazing. Nice and nice and beefy, all the sweetness from all of the veggies, the sharpness, and uh, ooh, good. Grab a drink. Mm-hmm.
Great minds think alike, Caspro. All right. To this, we're going to go ahead and add our one cup of milk. I like to kind of pour it around the outside. And we're going to let that simmer away until it quite literally simmers away. We really want the milk to kind of cook down. We don't want it to boil. So once it comes up to a simmer, reduce your heat. Keep it lively, but you don't have to do, um, you don't have to do like a slow boil yet or a slow simmer. You'll notice that a lot of the butter fat is going to kind of rise to the surface. Totally normal. And uh, again, that's kind of why we didn't leave the beef fat in here. I, I like draining that off just because otherwise you just have this huge layer of fat on top and it's kind of off the pudding. All right, there we go. Get this down to a simmer. And we'll just let this kind of cook down. This is basically it. Like we're going to be cooking this down until the milk is all uh, evaporated away. What's going to end up happening is the milk solids are going to be still attached to the meat and still in the pot. We'll add our wine and we'll let that cook down and then we'll add our tomatoes and let that cook for as long as you want to let it cook for. At that point, the meat sauce is done. You can't actually use it right away. Works pretty well. Tastes really good. Um, however, the longer you can let it kind of go, the richer the flavors become. Speaking of our tomatoes, let's go ahead and get a nice little bowl set up here. And what we're going to do is, hopefully you have your can of San Marzano tomatoes. Go ahead and get them into the bowl. And then if you have any of the extra sauce in here, I'm going to go ahead and walk over to my sink real quick and just trickle some water down the sides of the can to get all that extra tomato off. You're probably adding about a quarter cup, which won't affect things in the grand scheme of things. And so you definitely want to clean off the rim of your tomato can. We'll just set that aside for now. Now the great thing about this, you can actually go in with your hands and just mash up these tomatoes if you want. You can also Use a potato masher if you got one. Either way will work. You're just trying to crush these guys up. It's pretty fun to use your hands, but uh, I don't want to spend the time washing my hands in the sink afterwards. <laughs> but it does, it is kind of satisfying to go through and just hand crush tomatoes. Potato masher works very well as well. Yes, Annika, thank you so much for the uh, props on the Vegemite towel. Actually, uh, Straya, Master Strike, I don't know if he's on tonight or not, but uh, he's the one who gave me that. It's kind of a joke gift. Um, and so it's there. I'm going to go ahead and take these tomatoes and set them aside. I am going to pour the rest of my tomato kind of juice into that bowl. And then I'm also going to come over to my meat over here. And... Use a potato masher and actually just kind of mash down some of the ground beef. It'll also help to break it up. Now again, this is if you want a very fine grain meat in your tomato sauce or in your, in your meat sauce. If you like it a little bit chunky, uh, definitely skip this step because you'll be getting very fine meat. This will also help to kind of break down the veggies, although it's not required. We are. Set that aside, scrape down the edges. You'll see that the milk is cooking away as we kind of scrape the bottom of the pot. We're leaving a trail where there is no milk or there's no uh, uh, anything there. It's basically leaving a clean pan. So we just want to cook this for a little bit longer. until the milk has almost all but evaporated.
And the reason we want to do that and then add our wine is because anything that kind of cooks off and sticks to the bottom is going to come back up when we add our wine as part of the fond and just add that much more flavor. So how's everybody? How's everybody's week been? This has been an awesome week for me. Um, a lot of fun just coming off of a pretty big convention uh, for uh, Keller Williams Realty uh, the week after, which is always fun. Getting together with agents and kind of showing them some of the new technology that's come out, helping with any of their issues that they had uh, with some of that technology and spilling beer all over my cutting board. Sim UK, I put in about a cup of whole milk. You can also use heavy cream if you'd like. If you want something that's not, the higher the fat content, the less chance there is of it curdling or burning with a high temperature. And so if you want a, a more full fat milk or cream. I'm just going to keep everything moving so nothing sticks. Um, also yesterday, so my, my parents, some of you probably know, my dad and my stepmom live Right next door to me, they've got an RV. We sold their house last year. They moved into an RV so that they could uh, kind of travel the country. And they've been staying with me um, since December, actually since uh, mid-November. So uh, actually on Tuesday, they're heading off into the wild blue yonder. They've both been uh, vaccinated with the Moderna, I think, vaccine. And so uh, they're good to go. Still obviously taking precautions, etc. cetera. But uh, they're gonna go back out, hit the road and uh, see what they can see. So that's going to be a lot of fun for them. Uh, we had a going away party for them last night. Had a ton of crab. So I have a feeling that next week's cook-along is going to be how to do chipino. Because we've got a lot of crab to, uh, to cook. Absolutely, Sim UK. And chipino is one of my favorite things to make uh, and eat. <laughs> I love seafood. I love making that tomato sauce from scratch. Oh my goodness. All right, cool. So let's switch back to here. You guys can see that we've got a nice dry pan for the most part. We still have a little bit kind of pooling down here, but most of that looks like butter. All of the milk has kind of cooked off. In the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and add my wine. I would recommend letting this cook down just a little bit longer if you're doing this at home. You really almost want the bottom of the pan to be not all the way dry, but pretty dry. Yeah, I'll let it go for a little longer. Yeah, how about uh, how about your guys' this week? How's it been going? I'm just gonna snack on carrots while I wait. Mm hmm. You're going. Catch up on some of the old chat as well. Yeah, Casper, bread would be great. The difficulty with bread is that there's a lot of um, downtime where you're just kind of sitting around waiting for the bread to prove or do whatever it's going to do, and then you go and knead it. Not ideal for a cook-along environment like this uh, because the camera would be on and I would probably be doing something else while I'm waiting for the bread to do its thing. Um, however, I am planning on opening up a second channel where I'm going to move all of my cooking stuff to. And I do plan on putting together videos that are not live so I can actually edit down some of those time frames. Uh, bread might will very likely be something that I do uh, once we do that. Um, we're at episode 48 right now. Four more episodes, including this one, and we'll have been doing this for one year. So I started this when the pandemic started. And um, we've just gotten to that one year point, basically, almost. Almost there. And then, hey, Pibaro, how's it going, man? From Uruguay, nice. Nice to meet you as well, man. And Jameson, how's it going? Mmm, that's right, it is your birthday. Happy birthday, Annika. I hope it's been a wonderful week for you. I always love birthday weeks. And Sim UK. Cool. Got it, got it. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of nutmeg at this point. We're right to the end of the milk. I'm going to go ahead and 
Not a, not a lot, like an eighth of a teaspoon. Just gives a little bit of a extra kick. Get that grated in. And mix through. And now you'll notice at the bottom of my pan, all of the milk, all of the butter, fat, and everything, we're not even getting very much pooling down here in the bottom. Let me kind of scrape it to one side and, and tilt it again. You'll see that we're not getting very much liquid. This is the perfect time to add your wine. Scrape it up to this side, and then tilt. See, we're not really getting very much liquid down there. There is a little bit of moisture down there, but it's not enough to really pool, which is excellent. So we're going to go ahead and add a cup of white or red wine. Drier the better. And again, I'm just going to kind of pour it around the outside. And then I'm going to kick this back up to medium high, get it simmering really quickly. And get it all mixed through. And we're going to do the exact same thing here with the wine. We're going to let it kind of cook until it evaporates off. I'm going to let that simmer down just a little bit, and then I'm going to give it a taste and then adjust for seasoning. Salt or any pepper that I might want to add. Probably you see there's not going to be very much tomato flavor here because we haven't added it yet. I'm really just kind of tasting for seasoning more than anything else. Is it salty enough? If not, add a little bit of salt. We're probably going to finish with a little bit more salt once we add our tomato because the tomato is really, really acidic. But for now, we're just tasting this for kind of a base level of flavor. All right, now while we let that simmer, I'm going to go in, check on our pasta water. Grab a little towel to pull this off. Looks like it's boiling away nicely. Go ahead and add about a tablespoon of salt. Now the salt in the water here for the pasta basically just flavors the pasta. That's how you get... Uh, a, a well-seasoned pasta by adding some salt to the water. I'm also going to turn down the water, or turn down the heat, I should say, so that I can maintain a boil but not cook the water away. I'll switch back over here. That was the nutmeg, absolutely, Drake. And whether you put it in exactly when I did or not, uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference. That's just a good kind of uh, point, I guess, insertion point to get it in. It should be about a, an eighth of a teaspoon. You'll notice that this is getting really kind of rich and creamy, even though we haven't added, uh, we cooked off the milk and then re-added some wine. But it should be getting nice and kind of thick at this point. And then that's, once we add our tomatoes, that's basically it. Very, very simple bolognese sauce. You can add garlic to this if you wanted to, if that's a flavor you like. Some people like to add bay leaves. Some people use red wine instead of the white wine that I used. It really doesn't change the flavor profile all that much. Some people like to add a little bit of tomato paste as well. So there's a bunch of different ways you can modify this recipe. I really wanted to start with the base and just kind of show you what the classic bolognese is. And then from that point, you can always elevate it to whatever your flavor preferences are.
one thing that I also like to do sometimes is add a, a couple uh, dashes of Worcester, Worcester, wor, 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 uh, Worcester, Worcester, yeah, well, well, whatever that word is, sauce. Um, and it also adds a little bit of depth of flavor and kind of like an umami. And give me two seconds, I'm gonna let my dog run out the back door. Be free. And off he goes. So there's a lot of ways that you can kind of take this and branch off and make your own flavor of sauce, which is really, really cool. It's a super versatile kind of base recipe. Absolutely, Drake. The great thing is, there's not very many uh, steps to this recipe. <laughs> Building out your war system. That's kind of cool. I can get these guys out of the way. Now, last but not least, we're going to want to finish our pasta off with some fresh Parmesan. So I'm just going to get that out and ready. And as far as the pasta that we're going to be cooking, I'm going to be doing a nice pepperadelle, which is traditional when you're making bolognese. But honestly, it tastes great on anything. Penne or uh, rigatoni or linguine, basically anything other than angel hair, and it should be a really, really good sauce. Well, there's nothing wrong with angel hair. I just think with a nice rich sauce like this, you should have some really good noodles to kind of pair along with it. Let's see if Doggo is done yet. Hello. How are you? Yep, I know you're hungry. Now, one of the things you absolutely must do if you are cooking pasta, is you have to taste test the Parmesan. You just gotta make sure that it, you know, hasn't over-aged itself. Yum. Let's switch back here to our food cam. You'll notice that we're getting a much thicker sauce here. We're starting to get to the point where when we drag along the bottom, we're getting that moment of being able to see the bottom of the pan without the sauce filling it in quite yet, which is perfect. You do want to kind of keep it moving just so that nothing scorches to the bottom. And just be careful. Some of these pans, the grips will get really, really hot. So if that's the case, just make sure you have like a towel or, or something to grab onto them. This pan actually does a really good job of not letting the handles get too warm. Hmm. And this beer is a really good one. If you can find it, highly recommend it. It's got a really subtle sweetness, not overpowering. Um, Hell or High Watermelon, I don't know if you've tried it, but that's the, that's the beer that I, I've had before. Um, it's really good, but it's got a very pronounced watermelon flavor. This has a really, really kind of subtle, I don't even know if I want to call it pomegranate. Like you can kind of taste the pomegranate, but it's very subtle. It's almost like when you're drinking a LaCroix La or, or uh, any one of those flavored waters where you don't really get like that punch in the face of flavor. It's just that subtle background hint. Really, really good, highly recommend. <clears throat> All right. We're starting to definitely get that kind of traditional meat sauce aroma coming out. All of that liquid in there is boiling off. You'll notice a lot of steam, which is exactly what you want to see. We want the flavor, but not the, not the liquid part of it. So how does Chipino sound to everybody? Does that sound like something fun to make, maybe on the next cook along? I think on uh, episode 52, when we actually do our full year, when we come full circle, um, the first cook along live that I did was Taco Tuesday. And I think that that week I'm going to do a Tuesday special and we'll do a, a Taco Tuesday night to kind of celebrate 
having come on this journey for one year with all y'all. Um, it's been a blast. I've had a lot of fun putting it together. I'm trying to figure out ways to make it a little bit more efficient um, and also not kind of dilute the content on my on my channel here, which is primarily, or was before the pandemic, primarily aviation related and sim related. I uh, really kind of want to separate these two topics and then have like a central website or something where people can come in and find what they're looking for if they're looking for anything specific. I'm going to go ahead and give this another taste. Try and get a little bit of everything. And again, I'm just kind of tasting for seasoning. And that's pretty much on point. Yum. All right. <clears throat> so we're getting to the point now where the pan is staying very, very dry. A lot of that wine is cooked off. And you'll notice that there's not very much liquid left on the bottom. There's a little bit trickling around. If you kind of leave it for a bit, it'll all kind of coalesce into a puddle. But it's not full of liquid anymore. I'm going to let this go for maybe another minute. And then we'll get our tomato, crushed tomatoes in there. Now, after we add our crushed tomatoes, the sauce is technically done. Um, that being said, a lot of people, I, I, myself included, recommend letting this cook for another three or four hours to really get the full flavor, the full effect of all of these flavors kind of coming together and cooking off. That being said, if you just add the tomatoes, the crushed tomatoes, there won't be enough moisture in here for it to go three to four hours. So what you do is you add either a little bit of stock or a little bit of water just to kind of keep it wet as it's cooking and it won't dilute the flavor. It'll actually just allow it to break down some of those uh, meat pieces a little bit more. Some of the veggies will break down a little bit more. That being said, that's a recommendation about three hours in addition to what we've already done. However, you can use the sauce immediately. Really? Guess he's excited about the sauce. I'm going to go ahead and put in my crushed tomatoes. And I'm going to use my little spatula to just make sure that I get all of the tomato sauce off of the back of this bowl. Like so. I'm going to go ahead and get it stirred in. And then what I'm going to do is turn the heat down to low so that this is just barely, barely simmering. But make sure you give it a nice thorough stir before you do that. Scrape down the edges. If you have a bunch of stuff still on the edges and you are going to cook this for a longer period of time, another hour or two or three, um, those are going to be the first parts that burn and just make it a pain to clean off the pot. So I just try and scrape it down every time I can. There we go. We'll get this turned down to just a bare simmer. Something like this. You really, really kind of want it to just be a very, very gentle simmer, maybe even a little bit lower than this. You want it to be just barely bubbling. So right about there, 235 on my induction cooktop. 30 is that might maybe just a little too low? I think 230 is going to do it. 225 was too low. Go ahead and give this another stir through, and then we'll get our pasta cooking. Again, I'm using pepperadelli. You can really use whatever you want. Um, but traditionally, it goes really well with those very large noodles. Although if you're using rigatoni or penne, it tends to stick to those really well as well. All right, so we're back to our boiling water. Go ahead and pop off the lid. 
grab a handful. Let's go ahead and get this going. That should be good. I'm going to let this uh, boil uncovered for, I believe it's 10 minutes. What are you? Eight minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for eight minutes. And there we go. And what we're going to do is I'm going to grab a little pasta spoon thing and just kind of get these guys stirred around. And again, you can use linguine, you can use uh, rigatoni, penne, really anything you want, macaroni if you really want. We'll just let those guys cook. And back over to the sauce. So we got this kind of simmering away gently. Really, really nice. I'm gonna give this a taste now with the tomatoes added. And just make sure that it is still seasoned properly. Might need to add a little bit of salt. Mmm. That is good. Now you'll notice that if you taste it now, you're going to have that really, really pronounced tomato flavor. You're going to get that acid. You're going to get that like sour tartness from the tomato. The longer you let this cook, the more mellow that will get, which is why I generally recommend cooking it for at least another hour. As long as three or four, if you really want to go extra. The uh, only thing, again, to kind of watch out for is that it doesn't totally dry out. You'll basically be adding like three quarters of a cup of water at a time, and then letting it kind of simmer back down, adding another three quarter cup of water, letting it kind of cook out at just a bare simmer. So the water won't evaporate as quickly as if this is like a rolling boil, because at that point it's really letting steam off, really kind of letting the moisture out. The lower you can get the simmer on this, the slower the water will cook out and the longer it'll take, but that also means that the flavors are going to meld together a lot nicer. Now again, at this point, we're just kind of letting this simmer off. If you wanted to, you could add a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce, you could add um, uh, some garlic, crushed garlic. You could probably add the garlic earlier, but you really don't want to burn it because you'll get a really not like an off-putting flavor in there. Hmm. Or Chestershire. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm not good at saying that word. What is everyone up to this week? Any fun plans? Um, well, I'm going to go back to being uh, home alone. My, my dad and stepmom are back off on their adventures, so that's, that's pleasant. Um... By the way, we forgot to add our peppers, so maybe go ahead and add that now as well. Other than that, not much. Um, I know, Annika, you have been uh, probably attentive to the fact that some of us are watching Attack on Titan, so we'll probably get that going on this coming weekend, Saturday. And um, this Saturday I'm also going out... Uh, for a aircraft checkout, so I'm uh, kind of working with a new, not working with, but um, using a new flight center here at the Concord Airport. Still a member of uh, the Livermore Airport Flying Club, but just want to option a little bit closer to kind of go out and do just currency flights, practice around the pattern without having to drive almost an hour to get to where my uh, aircraft club is. And so... Going up with the CFI on Saturday, a certificated flight instructor to uh, just kind of get that dialed in. So pretty excited about that. Absolutely, Simu K. This freezes wonderfully. Um, you can, and this is, is about six servings. 
So you can double it, make a ton of it, jar it, or put it in a, a Ziploc bag or, you know, a plastic freezer bag. Um, just make sure all the air is pressed out. And then defrosting it, you can literally pull out the brick <laughs> if you have it in a plastic bag, cut it up, put it in a uh, saucepan, saucepan with a little bit of water, again, so it doesn't scorch, and then just heat it up gently until it's all defrosted, and then just uh, cook it down until it gets to a very meaty consistency without very much moisture. It, it freezes wonderfully. This is a great sauce for long-term storage. Yes, the landing on the freeway club. I, I have not landed on the freeway, but uh, kind of fun that that was in. That was in the news. And thankfully, uh, the pilot was okay and his passengers were okay. Attack on Titan is pretty violent. There's a lot of, a lot of blood. But it's animated, so I don't know if that makes a difference now. And yeah, three hours is a long time, and um, again, it's mostly unattended time. So you're just kind of setting it and just checking on it every half hour or so to make sure that it hasn't dried completely. Hey Siri, how much time is left on the timer? All right, we got two minutes left. Got a nice little bowl here for our pasta. Got our Parmesan cheese. I'm going to rinse off my grater here. It's got some nutmeg left on it. Give that a quick rinse. And air dry. We're ready to go once our pasta is done. And yeah, Drake and Allison, this doesn't generally start with garlic, which is kind of a, a lot of people find that interesting and kind of miss that garlic flavor. So if you want to add it at any point, I mean, you're welcome to. But the base recipe doesn't actually call for garlic. Hey, Mom, how's it going? Good to see you. Thanks. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a pretty nice kitchen. My stepmom actually went through and uh, kind of gave it a once-over over the past week. And I don't actually know where a lot of my stuff is anymore because she just kind of went at it. But uh, it's all good. All right, pasta is almost done. What we're going to do is spoon the pasta into the bowl. We are going to also use a little bit of the pasta water and just, we're not gonna like drain it until it's not wet anymore. We're basically just gonna pick it up, put it straight in here. The additional pasta water with the added starch to it will actually help the sauce kind of bind to the noodles. So let it, get, let it stay a little bit wet, that's fine. Since we're just about ready with our pasta, I'm gonna give this one last taste for seasoning. Partially because I want to taste it for seasoning, and partially because I'm, I'm hungry. And that's perfect. Yum. Mm-hmm. I am happy with that. Hey Siri, stop the timer. All right, let's go grab our pasta. Now, before we actually pull the pasta out of the water, grab a noodle and just make sure that it is cooked through. Nothing worse than pulling out your noodles and having them only be mostly cooked. And that's good. And go ahead and scoop them out. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about any extra water that's coming out. It's going to help with the sauce. Especially if you cook the sauce down and, and actually let it kind of go for two or three hours to really kind of get the flavors going, the sauce is going to be very dry. And so the additional water will kind of help hydrate it back up. I usually like to use tongs to pull my pasta out, but mine are dirty. So unfortunately, I've got to use that pasta spoon thing. All right, back here, let's go ahead and switch to this camera. Got a nice little bit of pasta. I'm gonna kind of fluff it up. 
There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can dress it here in the in the bowl. You can put it into the sauce or put the sauce into like a, a skillet and kind of toss it together. However you want to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to grab a ladle. Give my sauce a nice little stir here. Good healthy amount of sauce on top. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is use my spoon here or a fork. I'm just going to give this a toss right in the bowl. I like to mix things through first and then add one final ladle on top. That way you get sauce distributed everywhere. I find that often if you just kind of put the sauce on the top, you're going to have a lot of noodles that aren't very well dressed. And the whole point of pasta is so that every noodle has a little bit of flavor on it. So I like to give it that initial toss. I'll grab a little bit extra sauce here. Spoon it right over the top like so. And last, but certainly not least, a generous shaving of freshly grated Parmesan. Please don't use the grated stuff you get at the store. It's nowhere near as tasty as a fresh brick. And there we go. A beautiful bolognese sauce. Done. Now what I'm going to do, just because I'm kind of crazy about this, I'm actually going to clean off the edges. Uh, grab a little towel over here, the one that I've been using. Just get kind of all of those little extra bits off the side of the bowl. Because if you watch my channel, you know that I am of the opinion that the better it looks, the better it tastes. And there we go. Switch back over here. Take a look at that with a clean bowl. And we'll just do this with... Uh, No picture in picture, not needed anymore. Beautiful pasta bolognese. Done. All right, everybody, that brings us to the end of this week's Cook Along Live. Uh, next week, we're going to probably be doing Chipino. Again, I've got a ton of crab that I'm going to kind of go through and, and, uh, and cook up for some of that. Now, You'll notice that I've got this bowl ready. I'm actually going to keep letting this cook. I'm going to let it go for another two, two hours, two and a half hours. And the really cool thing about this is you can actually do a taste test and see whether you taste the difference between a, you know, just out of the pot sauce versus letting it really kind of cook down and maybe getting another hour or two hours into it and seeing if you notice a difference. Um, I definitely do. And it just kind of depends on whether it's worth the extra effort to, for you. But this is an awesome sauce. I hope you guys, if you didn't cook along live tonight with me, uh, will give this a shot at some point in the future. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. If you enjoyed this, by all means, follow me on Instagram. I post the ingredients list the week leading up to these events or these cook along lives. And um, you get a preview of what the final dish will look like. And um, yeah, like, subscribe, share. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get some more people following me here. I am going to be adding a new channel uh, for specifically for these cook-alongs and other food stuff and kind of separating that from my aviation channel, which is what the one that we're watching on right now is. And, uh, of course, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, information about that once that happens. So, But uh, that should be in another couple of weeks or so. All right, everybody. Hopefully I will see you again next week. And if not, give this one a shot. And I hope to see you again on another Cook-Along Live. Have a great one, everybody. Bye.